Hello everyone, in this video I will talk about how to use, how to install Joomla uh, content management system using Docker. Um, Docker simplifies everything, in, uh, really. So it will actually simplify um, the Docker, uh, sorry, the Joomla installation process as well. And you can also find more information about how to install Joomla using Docker on Docker Hub. Um, the, the image creators actually are, de uh, they, they, they are uh, doing a really great job documenting how they uh, how to use their um, images um, on your computer so let's actually search for a Joomla image on Docker Hub so I'm gonna oops, I'm gonna use search command on Docker and we'll type Joomla and let's say what images do I have here uh, so let's go ahead and use the first Joomla image which is an official uh, one so let's go ahead and pull it down. Of course, if you look at the documentation of Joomla, uh, Joomla, Im Joomla image on uh, Docker Hub, you'll you'll see that it requires MySQL database, um, and then therefore it requires a MySQL container, which um, it or you can just if you have a, a MySQL install on your computer or a remote server you can use that uh, use the IP address um, for for specifying which database that your Joomla container will connect to actually your your Joomla um, um, app will connect to and for instance here it tells you that uh, you can use link argument and then pass or a link option and then pass some of the um, some uh, pass your uh, MySQL container name and then and vice versa or whatever and let's actually move it over here and that it also tells you that there we have some environment variables that we need to set by the way um, so well we already have default options default values here and for instance if you when you set your uh, MySQL database root password uh, Joomla container will automatically read that value from your MySQL container as it's specified here. It says default to value of MySQL root password environment variable from the linked MySQL container. And also the others are already like, you know, the Joomla for database name. You can also change that by passing, by setting this Joomla DB name. And also uh, Joomla DB user is root, which is if you don't specify anything in MySQL side, on my SQL side, the, um, the default username will be root as well. So let me move this over here. Okay, so we have the Joomla image, and I already have. Um, let me actually see what images, uh, what containers do I have running. So I'll go ahead and run, delete all those containers. I don't need this, those containers. Um, which I actually um, did this example for WordPress earlier, but this time it's gonna be Joomla. So let's go ahead and delete those guys. Since they're running containers, I have to stop them first, or I can use F um, option kind of to force the deletion. Um, so by using those two options, um, A and Q, which is all, and Q means quiet, uh, which will return just the container IDs. So when I run this command, it automatically uh, stops um, the containers and then remove them. So if I look at what containers do I have left, all the containers, including non-working, non-running containers, you see that I have nothing left. Also, I can look at the images I have. So I already downloaded the image of MySQL, so I'll just go ahead and use it. But the first thing I need to do is uh, to create a new MySQL container from the MySQL image. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll give it a custom name. I will say MySQL this time and or let's say Joomla uh, database makes more sense I guess and um, let's run it in a detached mode I don't want it to stop I want it run I want it to run uh, in the background and so I need to set an environment variable which I which is mysql root password I believe um, we'll see if it, if it fails we'll see why it fails and then um, just give it a name. I will say test. I don't care. I mean, you can just use something secure. Uh, 
in your case, but here I'm just going to use test as a, as a password. And then let's say MySQL, and that should be it. Let's go ahead and run it. And let's say Docker PS. Great, it works. So let's let's look at logs for, for a moment. Um, so you can use logs command uh, by, to check uh, the logs of your containers. And then there, there are a couple warnings, but they're just warnings. I mean, what really matters is or error messages. That means something failed and you have to fix. Um, of course, you can also look at the warnings and if they're, for instance, they, ha they do set have important information. For instance, like it says, um, root local is created with an empty password. Please consider the switching off the in initialized insecure option and all the other things. Uh, user, um, you know, there's there might be some important information in terms of in terms of security as well. So make sure that you address those things if real if they really matter to your case. All right, so let's kind of clear this out and let's go ahead and run our Joomla container. So I'll give it a name again, um, and at this end we'll say Joomla uh, website. And let's link this Joomla website. As you, as you remember that you can link different containers. Um, so this time it's my it's Joomla DB, and I'm linking that container to my SQL alias in 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 uh, Joomla container. And let's go ahead and remember the other options. Maybe D will be fine. And I also will use uh, P option. Uh, P is mean meaning means port. So I'll say, okay, go ahead and bind the 80 port, 80, 80 port to 80 port. So what, what does it mean is, um, what it means is, um, so when I access to this image, this container from my computer, which is like, you know, the browser that is located on my computer, which is Mac at this point. Um, when I, when I visit that website, like localhost, um, uh, and then port 8080, um, it will hit the Docker engine, and Docker engine will take that request to uh, the container, which is um, Joomla, web, Joomla website container. And since the Joomla, and actually the Apache and everything, whatever installed in Joomla image as a web server, uh, will be listening to that uh, that port, and anything that hits that port will be taken care of uh, by uh, work uh, by Joomla. And actually, it's web servers, uh, web server, and Joomla. So, so I'll just go ahead and say Joomla here as the image, and I think that's pretty much all. Let's go ahead and run this guy, and let's look at. Okay, so we see that there are two containers currently running. So, I'll just move this web uh, browser over here. So let's go ahead and use it. Localhost eighty eighty. And here we go. Now we install Joomla in a couple minutes. Uh, if you don't consider you know, the time I spend talking and stuff. So let's go ahead and give it a name. Yeah, I'll say uh, hello Docker. And this is a test Joomla website developed, actually installed or installed using Docker. And you can say whatever, just I usually run recommend using easily um, uh, discover, discoverable email addresses or names, aliases, everything, passwords. But here, it is, at this time, I don't care. <laughs> um, let's say joomla.org and admin. Admin is fine. Admin. Let's go ahead. And as, as you can see, it's pretty fast, actually. So let's make it a little bit bigger here. And I think, okay, either username you created or username provided by your host. I think it's root. And this is test. This is, I think, Joomla or something. Let's go ahead and next. Um, what was that called? Joomla DB. Okay, since Joomla DB is, you know, is the container ID, which also is exposed as a kind of a network, is exposed on network, 
kind of a host name. I just use instead of localhost, I just use Joomla DB there. And yeah, you can install some. Let's go ahead and install some. I don't know. Um, sample data, Joomla English sample data, email configuration now and whatever. And let's go ahead and click on this install button over here. Remember that this Joomla installation and the database, they're both working in two different containers. And those containers are working in a Linux distribution, which is called Alpine. Alpine. And they're all running on my Mac. So you see that in the level of interactions but even though you know there are so many like in there are a couple level of interactions and that layers uh, but it's still pretty fast um, install languages yeah let's go ahead and remove the installation folder and go aside let's move this a little bit down there okay all right so we have our our Joomla um, up and running but uh, I hope you recognize that I didn't install any Apache web server. I don't have PHP on my computer. I don't have any configuration on my computer. Everything is already done for me in those images. All I did was, you know, just um, um, run those run those container images and create uh, create containers out of those images, and that's all. And I just I made some small configurations, but that's all right. So now I can go back to admin side of it. Um, at this point, we already installed everything. So if you like, you can stop watching, or you can just uh, see you know if admin side of everything is fine. So let's go ahead and say, oh, what's password admin? Yes, it's pretty much admin. Great, so uh, a little bit more um, information about this. So, you know, this, you know, I have Joomla uh, a container there. That means I can access to that container. And let's go ahead and actually get some inf inf information about that container by saying Joomla website. And that gives me a plenty of information about what that container and how that container is configured. You can see the state of the container, which is running. And is, is, is it notice that this this is this guy is just a JSON format? That means you can just save it to a JSON file like I did. I'm gonna do like this. Um, Docker inspect uh, Joomla website. And actually, let me change my working directory first. So I'm here. So go ahead and uh, let's, let's create a new test folder. And I'll go inside of it. Okay, great. So now I can say Docker um, inspect and Joomla website and Docker or Joomla website config.json. So great. And now I can open that guy with code um, program and here we go I mean all these things are basically just JSON uh, some say by the, by the way some say JSON some say JSON I don't really care I mean I say JSON or JSON sometimes but whatever you know this is what it is and you can if you need to visit information you can easily parse that information using different type of languages including Node.js I mean JavaScript on Node.js and so on so Let's look at some here, and we see you know the Apache. It it, it runs Apache at the start startup, and the host name, so on, um, and the mounts. You see that it actually um, mounts itself, so it creates a, a, a another. It kind of mounts itself on the uh, the Linux uh, the Linux uh, distribution that the Docker containers working on um, so that means I can go this go this area and then actually um, see the source code of the Joomla let's actually go ahead and do that great so let's uh, we, we have a, um, a command called exec exec which means execute and I can I'm saying that um, 
I'm 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 gonna like I'm passing options like interactive and interactive and then pseudo typewriter, and I will say Joomla uh, website, and I'm basically will run oops, bash if it exists. Great. So I'm I'm in I'm in the container Joomla container. And if I say ls, you see that I'll, I'll see all the um, Joomla website uh, source uh, source codes, and I that means I can change different things. For instance, I can go ahead and and look at the uh, configuration PHP file. If uh, so, usually like you know some of the command uh, commands are not available on the distribution on the distributions of Linux that uh, come with um, Docker images, and I don't know if it's there. But if it if it's not there, I'll show you how to uh, how to get that. So I'm using less command. Let's go ahead and say configuration.php. So it's not there, and I'm hoping I I, I think that I, I believe that this uh, nano is not there as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and if you if you say app get install in nano, the first error you'll get usually is this. It's because you have to update app get. So let's get let's say app apt get update. And that'll take a, a little while. So I'll go ahead and stop the video here, or pause the video, and we'll continue once it's done. Oh, it's done. Great. So I don't care. So let's go ahead and say apt get um, install this time and nano. Okay, we we're getting nano, which basically a text editor that runs on Bash. Um, it basically like helps you to edit text or different type of files, as long as they contain text uh, data. So let's say configuration.php. Um, I don't know why it doesn't work. Never mind. Let's go ahead and get the uh, install. Um, let's at least. Oops. Yeah. At least we can see you know the content of configuration. Uh, you can install like the Vim or whatever, whatever works. Uh, you can install those things. Sometimes this Nano works. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I mean, I, I need to figure that out. But this time it didn't. So I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So I can use less config. Warning terminal is not fully functional. All right, so this is what I see. Uh, these are the configuration options that are there. As you see, um, there are things like Joomla DB, the host thing, and everything. So basically, you can you know edit things and do things here. And of course, I mean there are more. You can just you know. Uh, browse um, different folders since it's Linux basically you can go you know to the, to the root for instance and you know you can see the other things I think that's all you can go up um, you can you know check the different I don't know it usually is in war um, and it's there anyways um, thanks guys. I hope it's a helpful vi helpful video for for you and Just if you have any questions, just you know put it down on the comment section below and I'll try to answer Answer them as much as as much as I can. So thank you